טוב, welcome uh, to the World Maritime Day and happy World Maritime Day. We're very, very happy and honored to have with us uh, the, uh, the Panama uh, Maritime Authority and the Consulate of Panama in, uh, in Greece, the Embassy and General Consulate, uh, the Ambassador and many important speakers uh, to cover uh, many questions uh, and replies uh, about Panama. It is the first time that uh, we are hosting uh, an ambassador and uh, this is a great opportunity to, uh, to have an online dialogue. Uh, before uh, going to the, uh, to the ambassador of Panama, uh, we would like to make a short presentation uh, about uh, the tonight's, uh, today's uh, event and a few words on uh, YES Forum. So, oops, sorry, just a moment, not here, great. So, YES Forum is the Young Executive Shipping Forum, the open plat dialogue platform in, uh, in Greece. These are some numbers that we have uh, uh, succeeded in, uh, uh, since uh, the beginning of YES Forum. Uh, we are very happy and proud to be part of uh, Posidonia, exhibition and we're organizing the day of the young people uh, during Posidonia of youth. Of course we, we are under the auspices of the Ministries of Education, Shipping, uh, the Hellenic Chamber of Shipping, the Ministry of Tourism and of course of several universities uh, that uh, the young people are studying, uh, are studying uh, shipping and not only. COVID did not stop us, and from March till July 2020, we have organized several events. Like Captain says, we were hosting captains uh, in order to tell us how was the life on board, how they managed to face several shipping crises, because we are in front of a big worldwide crisis. And of course, other panels regarding HR, uh, regarding the service providers and the maritime cluster, and of course, uh, technology and digitalization. On 5th of June 2020, that would happen the Yes to Shipping in Posidonia exhibition, which was postponed, we organized the first global Young Ship Forum, What Now? And uh, we uh, had uh, the opportunity to meet online 14 youth shipping organizations from 13 countries. Young Ship Panama was with us and they're also today uh, with us and we thank them for this. Another important panel that ran during a lockdown was the panel with uh, the next G shipping generation uh, during Delphi Economic Forum uh, and uh, with the title how to create a sustainable new shipping era. And of course, several events and campaigns that we took part. And last but not least, the communication of the young people, because it is very important uh, to stay in contact and empower each other. And now we have the 2020-2021, from September 2020 to September 2021. We have several projects that we will run. The first and most important, we started with the campaign say yes to masks, no to COVID-19. Uh, all these uh, great faces that you see with the masks are, um, are the, um, the volunteers of yes, and uh, they just pass this message to the young people to protect themselves and our society from, this, uh, from the COVID. Uh, last Thursday, we did the presentation of the book Winning Shipping Strategies with the participation of the, uh, of the writers and also of uh, uh, Mr. John Platsidakis. This Thursday, we have the honor to have together the ambassador of uh, Panama in an open dialogue and of course, many representatives. And uh, uh, on Thursday, 15th of October, George Avliris will have an open dialogue with the young people and he will make questions to them. He will ask the young people of uh, several things uh, and on the Thursday 12th of November we, have, we will have the presentation of YES paper 
Of course, until the end of this year, we will also organize the Global Young Shipping Forum too. On 29th of October 2020, we will organize our Yes to Shipping, under which will be part of Posidonia Web Forums Week, and it will be organized from 8 to 9. We will have opening remarks by representatives from ministries and organizations, and we will also have a debate between executives of uh, the uh, executives of this of the whole spectrum of the shipping cluster, and of course, young promising shipping executives. We will also run a presentation of Yes Forum a survey around about how the young people are thinking for the future of employment in Greece and how the shipping companies are thinking about the future of employment in Greece. It will be broadcasted live through our Facebook page and please like our Facebook page, uh, Yes Forum. 95% participants will be active on the open dialogue and of course all the remaining people will be, uh, will be able to see it live uh, in the broadcast. These are the sponsors that they are supporting us uh, for this year. And of course, the Panama Maritime Authority and the Embassy and General Consulate of Panama in Greece, they're also one of our supporters. And uh, we are thanking them uh, a lot. What's going on today? Who, who we are, the people that we are here today, the young people. 26% they're over 30 years old and 74% they're under 30 years old. 46% will be women and 54% will be men. And then we're having 42% undergraduate students. Then we're having students, we're having acting merchant marine officers. We have employees in shipping companies, university professors, and master and bachelor students. What these young people are studying, they are from merchant marine academies, they are studying shipping or economics, they're from technical universities, and of course they're having other studies like law, IT, and etc. That was from us. Please like our pages, follow us at the social media, and at this point, I would like to welcome uh, Her Excellency, the Ambassador of General Consul of Panama in Greece, Mrs. Julie Liberopoulos. And uh, it, is, it is great to have you with us, as with all the great uh, team and the representatives from Panama, because I think that it's very important and you will be very lucky by starting this uh, new uh, section for us that will be the Ambassador's uh, speeches. So thank, thank you, you. Uh, Your Excellency, thank for having you with us. Thank you, Danai. It's a great honor for me to be the Stop. first ambassador in this series of uh, online presentation and to thank my friend Danai uh, Bazantakio from this opportunity as well as to congratulate her and all of you for this wonderful initiative. Uh, my name is Julie Limberopoulos. I'm the new ambassador and general consul of Panama in Greece since December last year. As you can see my last name, both of my parents are here. So I was born and raised in Panama. As Panama is the biggest ship registry worldwide, there couldn't be a better opportunity than the World Maritime Day for us to meet. Uh, we cannot hear. Sorry, you, you have just one mute. You have uh, muted the. Uh, we're, we're not Yuri. hearing. Yeah, Yuri, you have the microphone yes, mute. Now, now we're hearing you, yes, because it was muted. I Sorry see. for this. So you didn't hear me. You didn't listen to what I said. No, we start again. Okay. Uh, it's a great honor for me to be the first ambassador in sitting this series of online presentations and to thank my friend Danaibe Santaku 
for this opportunity as well as to congratulate her and all of you for this wonderful initiative. My name is Julie Limberopoulos. I'm the new Ambassador General Consul of Panama and Greece since December last year. As you can see, my last name is Greek because both my parents are from Messinia, Peloponiso. And I have the pleasure and the lucky to be born in Panama. Um, as Panama is the big, biggest ship registry worldwide, there couldn't be a better opportunity than the World Maritime Day for us to meet. Let me introduce you to Mrs. Economo, our Vice Consul of Panama in Greece, where she will take a little bit of the IMO sustainable shipping. She will uh, talk to you a little bit about that. Good evening. Uh, the World Maritime Day this year is focused on achieving sustainability within the maritime world. Sustainable shipping for a sustainable planet is the World Maritime theme for 2020. This will provide an opportunity to raise awareness of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and showcase the work that the International Maritime Organization and its member states are undertaking to achieve their targets. We feel very proud that the Panama Ship Registry with the support of the IMO regulatory framework has already started the transition towards this sustainable future. The shipping industry has adopted and will continue to develop measures to cut green gas emissions, to reduce the sulfur content of ship fuel oil, to reduce marine litter, implement the ballast water management convention as well as protect polar regions, improve the efficiency of shipping through the electronic exchange of information, meet the challenges of digitalization of shipping, and finally, but very important, enhance the participation of women in the maritime community. I would let the ambassador then go ahead and review the agenda with everybody. Yeah, thank you, Nikki. Well, first, um, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our Panama Chief Register, our General Director of Merchant Marine, Engineer Rafael Cigarrista. Rafael. And uh, he will talk a little bit about the history, mission, vision, and values, advantages, and incentives. And then we have the General Consulate of Panama, who is uh, divided by different departments. One of them is Segumar, technical office, um, uh, headed by engineer Jose de Mosinez Racine, and uh, our shipping and corporate department, uh, headed by Mrs. Lena Des. Otopulu. Then uh, our CFERS operation department, uh, headed by uh, Mrs. Sofia Tasopulu. And uh, the last one is uh, the CIFR Regional Documentation Office, uh, headed by Mr. Miguel Angel Jaime. Okay, then uh, we have the Panama Canal, is uh, uh, presented by Mrs. Ana Tutias. And uh, they talk a little bit about Panama as a hub and economic zone enclosure by Mr. Cigarrista and myself. And then uh, after that, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to, to do it. Rafael? Hi, thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, my name is Rafael Cigarrista. I am a nautical engineer. I used to surf at sea as well. I spent uh, about seven years working on tanker vessels, bull carriers, and container vessels mainly. I was appointed as a director of Merchant Marine last July 2019. And from there, I am the head of the registry. Thank you very much for the opportunity and for the initiative, as the ambassador said before. Today, I'm gonna share with you our uh, new approach as a flag state, part of the innovation and technology process where we are at right now, and a bit about our fleet compliance. 
as you see on the screen right now, we have some stats and some facts that uh, are part of our uh, DNA as an organization. Panama is, uh, I mean, the Panama Registry has been ISO certified for the last 10 years, as you see on the top of the slide, left, left, left hand. We are uh, having 16% uh, of the share market. We are not target on any MOU uh, list, and we are member of the Tokyo MOU and Viña del Mar. Also, we have been leading the market as the chief registry since 1993. We have 53 consular offices around the world, which are providing services to the owner part of our fleet. We have uh, also on board around 318,000 uh, seafarers, active ones, and we have certified over two and a half million of them. So imagine the influence that Panama has as a, as a leader, as a leading flag state in the international market. Next one, please. We are part of the IMO, uh, part of the IMO, uh, we, we are member of the IMO, category A country, out of, uh, out of the 174 countries, just 10 of us are part of this group. We share this group with Greece as well. So we are on the same group discussing implementation of rules, development of new technologies at the IMO, and uh, we are part of the part of the council. Next one, please. Our vision and mission: provide nationality and jurisdictions to the ships through the legal certainty and the high quality standard. We have values as well. Important to mention is that uh, part of our uh, strategy is uh, is set or is based in four main columns. As, as I will explain a little bit about it, we have, uh, we have set the first column as a customer service or customer satisfaction. Also, the second column, which is uh, related to the technology and innovation. The third column, and uh, very important under our new approach, international compliance. We are very much uh, concentrate nowadays on compliance and uh, you will see that uh, we are achieving the goals and the final one is marketing and expansion of our technical offices around the world we have understood that our ship owners they need uh, responses in a real time they need solutions we cannot act as a government institution anymore working from monday to friday no we have to work clockwise, 24-7, Friday, uh, you know, we don't stop. We should continue providing services to the ship owner. The shipping industry doesn't stop. The vessels, they don't stop. So they need responses in real time. Next one, please. Few of the advantages, of course, I could uh, keep on going with the long list, but uh, I will try to, you know, just to go through the list. And uh, if you guys have any questions, for sure at the end, we are more than happy to elaborate more on each of them. Panama is uh, part of uh, the, I would say, 95%, 90, 95% of the international conventions uh, as, as part of the IMO. The easy access to the Panamanian consulate, as I said before, we have 53 consulates, uh, diplomatic offices, all over the world, plus 13 technical offices which are providing uh, services to our owners. There is no minimum, minimum tonnage requirement on, 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 on the process of registration of a vessel. We have over 250 flag inspectors around the world, so they monitor our fleet. They go on board the vessels at a minimum cost for the ship owners. Dual registration, we accept uh, you know, bearable charter, time charters, uh, different modalities. So we accept them as well. 
providing different options to ship owners, a special registration, a scrapping and delivery voyages. For instance, we, we issue a special registration to a vessel which is going for a scrap just for the purpose of delivering the vessel. Flexible tariff and competitive tariff, that, that is for sure, will remain as the first option for ship owners right now. If, if, if you see, if, 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 you, if you go to the new buildings market right now, we have uh, been able to capture one third of the entire worldwide order book. It means that the rest of the cheap registries, they are sharing among them about uh, 66%. So imagine uh, right now there are 10 international registries which are competing with us. We have one third and the others, they split two thirds among them. So it means that we are leading discounts, policies, or incentive, for instance, if a group of owners, they have more than X or Y amount of vessels, we provide them with an incentive or special tariff, new constructions as well, new technologies. We try to push the owners to go for innovation, you know, eco-friendly techniques, as, uh, as uh, Mr. Ni Mrs. Nicky said before, we are uh, somehow implementing all the new regulations related to the reduction of the greenhouses gas effect and the, and the CO2 footprint. Next one, please. Also, we have introduced already the use of electronic documents. I'm gonna elaborate more on the registration and radio license further, but related to the technical certificates, we have about 20 technical certificates issued by ourselves directly, no by the classification society. We have 50% of them so far on electronic formats, and we are working on the rest uh, to have it ready as soon as possible. We, we understand that having all these documents on board, we act in, in, in you know, introducing these technologies we, we are eco-friendly, we protect the environment, no, no use of paper, or at least reduce the use of paper, and we reduce the extra burden on our crew on board. We understand as well that, uh, you know, every port authority, once the vessel go alongside, or once the vessel arrive to the anchorage, there are different authorities going on board, and captains and, and uh, crew members are struggling sometimes uh, amount papers, and, uh, you know, we are trying to introduce this to provide solutions so authorities, they can get uh, easy access to the electronic formats, formats of documents, and they can, they can in real time, certify the validity of them and the information which is included on each of the documents. We have signed an agreement with China, which means that uh, we have a special tariff to every vessel once they go alongside in China. This is very important for the ship owners to understand. It means that they don't pay the regular tariff as long as they apply in a proper time, in a proper manner through the local agency. This is, a, this is very special. Not every flag administration has this agreement. So if, if you guys are part of any, of any, you know, company where you have vessels calling to China, you should check this out and let us know. We could provide help you on, on, on this, uh, you know, on this cost reduction as well. Legal security, we provide uh, ownership and titles and mortgage registration, which means that at the end, the investment is protected. As I said before, about 300 vessels of new constructions we have recorded during 2020 in the middle of the COVID-19. This is such an achievement. None of them there have been questioned by any international institution. All of them, they have been recorded in a proper, in a proper manner and without further delays. Something which I would like to mention as well. We have recorded over 45,000 mortgages so any of them has been questioned. Any of them has been involved on any legal dispute. 
That's why international banks, they are still trusting on our platform of services. Easy and fast uh, process of registration. We do it fast. Nowadays, we have managed to reduce 50% uh, in terms of uh, time responses. So if all the information is on hands and everything is complete as the application form and documents uh, are provided in, a, in, in, you know, in, in complete form, all in a proper format, we could provide the cheap registration in less than 24 hours. Panama offices, as I said before, provide 24 hour you know, services. We are operational, we respond so in, a, in, in a real time as fast as, as, as fast as required by the clients. Please go, next one. Uh -huh. Few of the incentive, as I said before, we are providing, you know, different tariff or incentive to the ship owners while they are in process to renew their own fleet. It means that if they introduce new vessels, new constructions to our flag, we provide them with an with, with an special uh, tariff. If they are, uh, you know, introducing the energy efficiency techniques it means that perhaps they use lng as a fuel they have an incentive if they prove that they are reducing the consumption the consumption of fuel i mean oil we provide them with an incentive as well trying to comply with the goals established by the by the international Maritime organization. Next, please. Right. Talking about uh, talking about uh, the electronic uh, registration and uh, a scan by a smartphone. As I said before, we have introduced. We have understood that the market change now we are talking about uh, smartphones uh, zoom conversations you know and the whole business is in process to change well we have introduced uh, the use of electronic documents uh, we are in the middle of a re-engineering process we are in the middle of a re-engineering process where we have introduced new techniques and innovation you can scan the chip registration if you see at the right side of your screen there is a barcode at the bottom of a chip registration you can download in your smartphone the 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 qr reader that's that's for free you could scan the chip registration and you are able to validate the information which is in front of you in other words you will have information in a real time this is very this is very important for us because in the past we cancel vessels due to some international sanctions or due to some you know non-compliance with certain rules but they keep they used to keep the document valid on board because you know issue date expiration date so if if you don't have the deletion certificate in front of you you know authorities were not able to identify that that vessel was not any longer in our flag so nowadays authorities could easily scan and understand that the vessel is no longer in our flag so as you see we are providing digital I mean, electronic responses in a real time to our owners. Next one, please. In terms of compliance, I, I would like to elaborate a little bit here. If, uh, if, if you see during 2019, our fleet was inspected over 16,000 times. Imagine this or state control authorities around the world inspecting our fleet. Well, we have achieved 96.4% of compliance. It means that our fleet K 
keeps a good standard. That was back in 2019. Right now, up to the end of August, we have been inspected 7,000, about 7,400 times. Less than, uh, a bit less than uh, 2019, if you compare the same period due to the COVID-19, that's for sure. Again, the outbreak has affected the amount of inspections on board our fleet. But again, we are getting 96.94 percentage of compliance. So somehow we are, we are improving there as well. As I said at the beginning also, we are not uh, targeted by any port state control authority or memorandum of understanding. We are whitelisted by Paris MOU. We are whitelisted by Tokyo MOU and we have obtained the best result related to the U.S. Coast Guard Qual Chip 21. It means that we expect by the 2020 receive that award and get uh, you know that uh, that that qualification issued by the government. Uh, sorry, by the U.S. Coast Guard. So we are again implementing, as I said, also. One of the columns in our fleet is uh, international compliance. As you see, we are working hard to implement all regulations and to regulate the performance uh, in our fleet as well. Could you go to the next one, please? Right here is a short video which, uh, which uh, will provide you a picture of our registry Three. and this and end the presentation. During these difficult times, the Panama ship registry has been modernized. Changes have been made in order to stay close, despite the distances that may separate us. Thanks to advances in technology, we are able to uphold our commitment to our users by offering an improved service 24 hours a day. By introducing a digital token, we have been able to reduce your processing time by 75%. We are eco-friendly and are proud to promote a paper-free work environment. We do this all for you because it is thanks to you that we continue being the world's largest ship registry. Thank you very much, and I will be more than happy to, to attend any questions you may have at the end. Thank you, Engineer Cigarista. Before I start to introduce to you my team from the General Consulate of Panama here in Greece, I would like to talk about a little bit of our consulate. Um, uh, is situated in Piraeus, the heart of the great shipping industry. This is the only diplomatic representation uh, with authorization to issue official documents on behalf of the Panamanian government. Come the Panamanian Allah, yes. 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 Marine Administration. Um, it is a one-stop office of maritime services covering all areas of shipping, corporate, technical services, and crew. Our highly experienced staff provide a personalized and flexible service that operates within the worldwide legal frameworks. Uh, well. Okay. Um, with our new government, uh, it's under His Excellency the President Laurentino Nito Cortez of Cohen. Uh, our president has also Greek roots from Thessaloniki. So it's a great pleasure for us to have a Panamanian president with Greek roots. Um, we have great chances, specially created, to meet all the needs of the Greek ship owners. Our special incentive and different economic discount and specific requests based on our customized needs and requirements of the clients. 
Mm -hmm. Now we will start with our technical office um, under uh, Mr. Engineer uh, Jose Racine. Jose? Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, I want to thanks personally also to Danai and all navigator team okay, for this opportunity and also to congratulate for this great idea and project of the uh, JES Forum that I'm witness personally that uh, have been increasing and receiving the support of the international shipping industry. Okay? My name is Jose Racine, I'm chief of the International Technical Office of uh, Segumar in Greece. Okay? Uh, which is the technical office of the Panama Flag Registry. I'm nautical engineer. I've been working for the Flag Administration for about 20 years. I've been appointed in different international missions and projects of the administration. And Segumar Pareo was a project I was appointed in June 2010, okay, to start this project almost from scratch, from creating the quality system procedure and to strengthen the cooperation and the relationship with the consulate together with the, the shipping industry, poor authorities and class societies in the region as well. Okay. It was a need of our clients in Greece in, in more than um, since 2010 and before that period. I'm more than 10 years in, in Greece and the, the service of our office has expanded to all Europe and even countries outside the European continent. Being more than 10 years in Greece also helped me to understand the bit, let's say, a great way of thinking and to provide the necessary assistance. Each market is different. And I'm pretty sure the, the Greek uh, is a special one that you really need to understand. It took a moment, okay, since I took this moment, this responsibility, it was a, a commitment and as I said, a challenge that uh, will at the end will support our country and our flag registry, which uh, as you may know, the, the Greek ship owners are the biggest uh, ship owners in the world. Uh, they're controlling about more than 20% of the, the world fleet, merchant marine fleet, and the European community is 54% of the merchant marine fleet. So our office is uh, one of the most important for the flag administration, being the, the Greek market, one of the strategic ones. Our direct responsibility is to provide the necessary support to all chief owners and managers based in Greece, okay? And of course, in the region, within the region. All Panamera vessel trading within Europe as well receive the support of our technical office. We are the, one of the most important, as the general director mentioned, of the 13 technical offices around the world locating in strategic location of the shipping industry. As I mentioned before, uh, because the Greek ship owners, something that all ship owners and managers take in consideration at the moment they, they are deciding for, the, deciding for the flag registry is the technical support that they will receive from the flag administration. The expedite and effective support is priceless in critical moment, just before the departure of the vessel or before starting a loading operation of the cargo, any technical issue or problem of the vessel may cause financial and legal issues to the, to the ship owner. And there is the moment where our office interact with owners and managers and class societies. As we may know, everybody involved in the shipping industry, this is a teamwork where ship owners, flag administration, class societies need to work together on a day by day. These days, everybody is being evaluated there are being a rankings and a, a performance of everybody's being a monitored by, by different entities. So everybody want to keep a healthy fleet performance. And that's why it's a necessity of having a healthy fleet performance. 85% of our technical certificates, the ones that are being issued by the flag administration are already electronic. This means that Ship owners, managers can apply online and they will receive the electronic certificate, electronic way. So there is no need of being printing or sending by courier anymore. So all the proper uh, security measures have been taken and our document having all the different ways to verify the authenticity, as mentioned before by the general director. 
all our documents between flag registry and including technical certificates. The interaction with technical department of the companies and surveyor is a key element for us in our day-to-day -day, uh, support and service, understanding each other, understanding the needs, and provide the necessary service. Uh, basically, that's the summary of our daily duties and job. Anything, any other question, I will be free to, to ask at the end of the presentation. Uh, I will introduce my colleague, uh, Mrs. Lena Despotopoulo, in charge of the corporate and shipping department of the council. Thank you. Hello to everyone. I'm very glad to join the Dave Forum today. Uh, I have uh, been working for the General Consulate of Panama since I finished my studies for many years now, which provided me a very good experience of the Greek shipping market and the whole day-to-day uh, um, -day process of the conflict as to the uh, Vessel registration, mortgage registration, and uh, all the attention to the clients of uh, Panama Registry, and um, providing them a very uh, personalized service and uh, uh, offering them solutions when, whenever they need our support uh, as users of Panama Registry. Uh, in the team of the consulate, uh, we are four people in my department, uh, which uh, every day we're attending our clients, and we're here to uh, help them with uh, every requirement they have, not only in the part of vessels and uh, registration, but uh, in corporate matters as well. And every query they have uh, uh, for the Panama, for the registry, uh, always in very close collaboration with Panama Maritime Authority and the support of our uh, director of, uh, of Mexican Marine. Uh, we are very glad to, uh, I'm very glad to, uh, that I have the chance to be in that position. And uh, with my colleagues uh, of the other departments, we're having a very good uh, um, knowledge of Greek shipping market, and we're trying to offer our best service. Uh, let me introduce you to my colleague, Mrs. Sofia Tasopoul of the crew department. Hello to everyone. Uh, I'm Sofia Tasopoulou. I've been working for the consular for the past 18 years at the crew department. So, as vital as the industry is uh, to the world and its people, equally important, it's also the brave seafarers who perform uh, one of the toughest jobs in the world, running those huge ships through the roughest uh, seas and the riskiest areas. The Consular Department of the Seafarers Operation is uh, here to provide and to evaluate that all the seafarers have their the qualifications to perform safely their duties on board. Our department is uh, working closely with the port state control for consultation, for cooperation, uh, for verifications, for any clarifications that may need. We have uh, 24 client support. Our uh, team is also experienced. We have to understand the, the urgency when a crew has to join at a, a port. So we provide the fast and efficient service. Um, this is a job that has to, we have to be very, very careful. We have to follow certain uh, conventions like the MLC, the ILO, the, we, the STCW. So we are trying to uh, be as fast and as supportive as we can. Being in that area for so many years, we understand the urgency. We are in close cooperation with the crew managers and all the shipping companies. And I dare to say that we have managed uh, the good results and the co close cooperation with our head office in Panama. So let me introduce you to Anna Tsutia, who is in... Uh, Miguel, let me introduce you to our head uh, 
of our regional documentation office, Mr. Miguel Haen. Uh, good evening, everybody. I would like to thank you, you all for your presence. My name is Miguel Jaén, the head of the Regional Technical Documentation Office, which is a branch department of the CIFRA Directory. Our mission is to guarantee the competence of CIFRAs conforming the parameters established by the STC 78 amended convention, the MLC 2006 convention, and any other national regulation. Our team, conformed of three technicians, evaluates and approves all the applications presented by the clients through our consulates. Likewise, our office comes with three assistants in charge to issue and deliver to our consulates. All the CMAN books and certificate endorsements previously approved, assuring that they comply with our quality and security policies. This office evaluates monthly an approximate of 4,000 applications and issues around 2,500 full terms monthly. Finally, with our highly experienced team, we provide consultants to the consulates of Panama regarding any technical matter since the satisfaction of our clients is our prim primary objective. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Hello from me as well. Mm -hmm. My name is Anna Tsiutsia. I'm an attorney at law and I have the opportunity and the honor to be one of the members of the team of the Embassy and General Consulate of Panama in Greece. The latest slogan of Panama Canal, as you can see, is having the world at your fingertips. And it's totally true, as Panama's connectivity is enhanced by ports in two oceans, and transshipment center, an interoceanic railroad, a telecommunications network with top-notch technology, and a world-class financial and commercial service center. There is also that undisputed evidence that actually confirms the permanent value and the global importance of the route of, through Panama. Today, with the expanded canal, the route increases its value as a link in the chain of global trade. The Panama Canal, connecting the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean, has been improving world trade, uh, tra transportation and connectivity for over a century. Since its opening, the interoceanic waterway has transformed world trade by reducing times, distance and costs between products, production, excuse me, and consumption centers. Since 2016, the expanded Panama Canal has doubled the capacity of the interoceanic um, way, uh, excuse me, to meet the growing demand of the world trade. While today, the Panama Canal connects, one, connects 144 maritime routes that reach 1,700 ports in 160 countries, positioning Panama as a transportation, logistics, and service center. To maintain competitiveness and improve efficiency, the canal continues to invest in its existing infrastructure with maintenance and modernization programs and training also its personnel. And now, Her Excellency the Ambassador and General Consul of Panama in Greece, Mrs. Liberopoulou, will talk to us all about Panama as a hub, an economic zone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna. Well, I have to say the Panama has become one of the most important hub in Latin America. Most of the continents, Europe, Asia, even America, use Panama as a hub and as an economic zone also offer great incentives to Greek shipping companies for the relocation to Panama City as its head office of branch, where they can easily operate all the vessels related activities called in North and South America and Caribbean. The strong asset of Panama are its strategic location, the Panama Canal and the Panama Pacifico as special economic area offering full operation services and incentives to all businessmen. 
Another point to consider is the hub of the Americas, which bring easy access to all Latin American countries with at least two flights per day from Panama City offering the best connectivity in the entire America. Um, if uh, you have any question, we would love to answer. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you very much for the very great uh, presentation. If you can uh, stop the share just to uh, uh, just to make the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna. Uh, it was it was a great presentation about Panama and. Uh, uh, as uh, as we know, the cooperation between Panama and Greece uh, is going back to many years, uh, and it's very important to know how you think and how uh, you're getting through. We have um, a question from uh, Vasiliki. I don't know if you can open the camera, Vasiliki, and make the question you have, or I will do it for you. I can also do it if you're not. Uh, online, uh, it's how easy was for Panama Registry to cope with all new international regulations and are you ready to deal competitively with the next to come? So it's about the regulations. Right. I don't know who would like to, uh, how, how would you would like to, I think with C means, Vasiliki means the regulations before COVID. Uh, I don't know if C means COVID. I understand the, the regulations before COVID. Uh, Rafael, well, of course. Well, yeah, that, that, that's a very good question. Let me, let me do it in, in, in a, you know, in, in a separate way. As you said, the COVID-19, the outbreak has made, you know, like, like here and in, in, in our market. Now we call it the new normal. So we can continue doing the same thing in the same way. Mm -hmm. At some point, we extend the contract of the CFARES on board because we thought that this was the, the best option in that time. What I'm trying to say here, is that what we plan on December or January, we have to rethink about it in February and so on till today. Because the, you know, the situation on daily basis is changing rapidly and uh, we have to adjust ourselves. At the beginning of 2020, we were talking about uh, sulfur cap, the 2020, the new law sulfur fuel. Nowadays, we are not talking about uh, sulfur anymore. We are talking about COVID-19 and the seafarers which are stranded on board and they are not able to be repatriated. We are talking about accidents. We are talking about fleet compliance. But how we can comply with all these goals at the same time if we cannot travel? The whole industry is stuck somehow. Slowly, slowly, the whole world is adjusting to the crisis. And we are opening, you know, the international airports. For instance, what we establish to avoid accidents on board the vessels, inspections, bettings, audits. Nowadays, even though the manufacturers, you know, they have to go regularly on board the vessels to monitor their equipment because this cannot delegate into the crew or to the crew. You know, for instance, the boilers, the boilers, the, 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 the manufacturers, the classification society, they have to go on board to monitor the functionality of the equipment. Are they going on board today? No, they are not going, they cannot travel. So, you know, somehow we are removing the barriers, we are moving away the barriers, and that's why you see that uh, the, the, the line of accident is raising up, not only in Panama. I'm pretty much sure every other flag administration is facing the same situation. 
because there is no inspection. There is no follow-up. There, no, there is no flag inspection, or at least there are less flag inspection, flag inspection or state control, classification societies, recognized organization, internal audits, betting, insurance, manufacture. So nobody can travel. At the end of the day, we cannot be doing the same thing in the same way. You know, the COVID-19 has, uh, has pushed us already to take a different, you know, different approach. Like you see today, this kind of meeting used to be, you know, in a nice hotel, you know, with a dinner at the end, and uh, we all shake hands and take pictures all together. But nowadays we are doing this by Zoom, you know, because we can't travel. We can't go and gather together and do the same thing in the same way. So sa same thing we are doing here in Panama. We are introducing new techniques, as you see, we are trying to go paperless. All documents, so we're gonna be issuing them electronic form, but uh, as a flag, we are in a conversation with your societies, trying to see how we can monitor the vessels in a proper way, remotely, is that the option? Can we do an inspection of the vessel by soon? Are we, or are we supposed to delegate all the responsibilities to the crew of the vessel. Is that right? Is that the, the proper way to go further? We don't know. You know, like I said before, we are adjusting ourselves to the new normal. We are trying to provide solutions, but we have to sit together. The, the, the whole industry, you know, all stakeholders, government, you know, chip owners association, managers, you know, crew, crew providers, again, you know, at the end of the day, it's something that we have to do all together, which is, a, you know, the final message, I think. And this is, this is something, Yanis, uh, you will say your question, as crew operator, I, as young crew operator, I understand that uh, you are facing some problems. Uh, before Jan says the question, I want to tell you that uh, because our company navigator represents a Panamanian agent. In August, uh, we were they were able to do many successful crew changes. Although they were, it, it was not easy at all. Yanis is writing a few things on uh, on closure of borders, but the, the and we have also put in LinkedIn uh, the success of these crew changes because it was it is very important because Panama is a very strategic point. Uh, too many vessels are transiting through transiting through Panama. And I fully agree on this uh, dialogue on the table. And this is why we mention a lot that the young people must be part of the dialogue and of must course. participate in online events. And this is it's a great honor. You know, many times when we uh, see such representatives from embassies, you wait the people to discuss with to be people from shipping like uh, organizations, uh, ship owners, charterers. And it's very great for us that now it, this is being done with young people because although uh, some things are not, um, how can I say, familiar to them and they're getting to know this, it's very important uh, to see how, how you are, uh, I mean, to, 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 to learn some things and how Panama is thinking because Panama is very, very important. I mean, when you are in city. Let me give you, let, let me give you some, 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 some sense of the situation locally. We have been able to repatriate over 5,000 people here in Panama. You know, we, we, we have been able to take crew from the Pacific side via Isthmus by bus to the Atlantic side from the same company. You know, Carnival Cruise Line, for instance. We take the crew from the Pacific side, they use the tenders, so they come alongside, we take them via Ismos, and we put them in another carnival vessel, so they were repatriated. This is very unique. You know, over 5,000 people, you know, we have been working closely with, with uh, Air France, KLM, Iberia, United. We have uh, several humanitarian flights on a daily, well, not daily basis, but weekly basis, I would say, you know, we have at least two or three flights per week. I was in one of these flights last week coming from, from, uh, from Europe. And, uh, you know, 
the fleet was about 200 people and 150 were seamen. You know, but this happens because the country, we as an authority, were able to talk to the airline. You know, the consulates around, they played a very good uh, role here. You know, if every country managed to do these kind of things, to open a corridor, a special corridor for seafarers, this will help us a lot. You know, don't forget that we as a flag state, we provide the vessel. So this is our platform. You know, we provide the vessel to the, to, to the world, I mean, to the whole industry to move the cargo. But we don't provide the, 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 the forced labor. You know, we don't provide the crew. The crew is provided by other countries. If they don't open their borders properly, I, I'm talking about uh, India, I'm talking about the uh, Philippines, I'm talking about Vietnam, Myanmar, you know, if they don't open their borders properly, we will not be able to repatriate the crew. We cannot abandon them. Mm -hmm. And this is the problem we are having nowadays, you know, because uh, if we extend the contracts, we are going against the MLC. So we get de detained by the poor state control. If we push the ship owners, to, to repatriate the crew or to disembark them, the ship owner then has to pay, you know, the whole expenses. They have to go to the hotel. They have to go to quarantine. You know, all these kind of problems that we are facing today. So we have to, again, sit together, be honest to each other, you know, and try to find solutions. I see here talking with two different agendas everywhere, you know. It's like, a, yeah, Panama is doing this, Panama is doing that, you are doing this wrong, you are doing that wrong, but who is facing the things properly? Mm -hmm. You know, who, who is actually putting the face there to get the heat? Of course. You know? so, Jan, you want to, Jan, you want to ask something? Uh, uh, to uh, yes, a couple of things, basically. <laughs> um, once again, good evening, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Janis Kondrodimas. I'm a co-operator. I'm almost uh, more than five years in the shipping industry. Um, taking uh, into account all these interesting things and these unique things, as uh, uh, it was mentioned before, um, of the COVID era that we live and we are going to live. Um, Regarding the, I have two questions. Um, as it was mentioned, in, in some vessels, uh, I mean cargo vessels, for example, in, in my company, in the company that I'm working for, we have uh, tankers and bulk carriers, a total on about 30 vessels. Um, but unfortunately, we do not have a Panama flag on them. But this is another one. We have to talk about it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> is that um, we, as uh, Ms. Pradaku mentioned before, some companies during, uh, at the end of August, basically, uh, proceeded with crew changes in Panama. But uh, as far as I know from the industry, it was charter flight and the tickets were um, more than 3,000 euros per person. So let's take into account the, the, the market situation. How is the market of, uh, of uh, the rate? And let's take also into account the costs of the shipping company. And do not talk about the shipping company that operates or owns 40, 50 vessels, 60 vessels, a group of companies. Let's take into account a medium range company on about 10 vessels and especially bulk carriers, that they had the most, the biggest problem in the market. Um, what is the policy of uh, Panama flag in cases that many seafarers are on board on vessels for more than uh, 12 months? Because it was, uh, we, we, we noticed that, which is very logical, but there are still uh, seafarers on board more than 12 months. For example, Marshall Islands flag that I have experience with, Liberian flag and Malta uh, uh, flag, they provide an acknowledgement of the flag state 
uh, we provide them extension contracts of the seafarers, valid extension contracts uh, for two months more, and a mutual consent letter of the seafarer that he states that he said that he stays on board with his own willing, in his uh, on his own uh, willingness, and he would like to be repatriated in the first convenient port. So we take an acknowledgement from the flags. What's the policy of Panama on that? And how, how quickly it was decided the policy of uh, Panama flag on that one? Thank you. We do, yes, that's, that's a very good question. We do basically the same. Everybody's doing basically the same. What we do is, uh, you know, we, we ask for some information, of course, like, like, like the mutual consent. As you said, there should be a document signed by both. You know, and uh, and uh, how fast we came to the point to do that? Well, we decided to extend the contracts from, uh, I think that was March of April, when we first uh, accept the extension of contracts. However, don't forget that local authorities, they are pushing for implementation of the MRC the poor state controls. This is a big And sometimes, matter. Uh, correct. I apologize for interrupting you, but this is a big matter. And during uh, June, as far as I remember, a bulk carrier vessel from Greek management company, it was, uh, it took detention from the flag state. The flag state was Malta. Uh, it took detention in flag inspection due to the fact that there were on board seafarers who had more than 12 months on board. Mm -hmm. The own flag state gave detention to flag inspection to a Greek owned vessel. Sorry to interrupt. This is also in Europe. In Europe. Yeah. Sorry. This is this is this is something uh, you know, Yanni. That uh, and sorry to interrupt. I am my family is in shipping fifty years, and I am twenty. This is something that we have never we have never lived before. Uh, something that is unique, uh, not only for shipping, right. for the world uh, for the world the situation and. Uh, you know, uh, uh, of course, you know that shipping was always uh, based on the human uh, talent and on the human uh, uh, on board. Uh, and uh, we continue to be like this, but, uh, and you know, it's hard. I know we're talking with many young people that they are on board and they're on board for more than 15 or 19 months. And it's not easy. So it's a new, it's a new era and many, flags and many registrations in many countries, I believe, including Panama, it's for sure that they are trying to, to find solutions, but there is not a solution for everybody uh, to be happy. I mean, uh, it's, it's very difficult because we have in front of us uh, two difficult years until the vaccine is found. And um, this, is, this, is, uh, uh, this is something that we have to empower the dialogue in order, and sorry, sorry, Mr. Rafael Segurista, that I took the initiative to speak. No, no, please go ahead. But, but really, it's very, it's very unique for all of us what's going on. However, uh, it's, it's great to have the dialogue and to mention problems and to exchange views because this is something that uh, not we're missing in the city. We were doing a lot, but we were not doing online. So I think that. Uh, this is the change that uh, COVID brought to us, and the uh, general consul of uh, consulate of Panama in Greece and the embassy. Uh, I can see that they were always that they were always No, it's not from us. I think that uh, everybody's muted. Okay, sorry. This is the online. This is the technology. So I believe that it's good that it's good that we are doing the dialogue and we are here uh, to say, but nobody has the real replies of how all these things will happen. What we can say is that the surveys are happening online and uh, at least shipping did not stop even for a, for a day. So this is very, very important that uh, uh, Panama, it was one of the countries that helped very, very seriously uh, to make continue working for everybody. Even tourism stopped at all. Uh, aviation 
Uh, we don't know how, when we will see planes uh, flying again as before, but the vessels are still there. <laughs> and I believe that Panama uh, has helped a lot in the organization. A second, a very quick question in order to conclude from my side. Um, what are the Panama flag uh, intentions regarding remote flag inspections, which is something that we hear it very, very, almost every day in, in the industry, that some classifications and some flags are trying to perform remote inspections to the vessels through the means of uh, internet, uh, like uh, Skype or Zoom or uh, things like that. Thank you very much. Right. Um, about remote inspections, we have approved already, I think, eight companies, classification societies, IAX mainly. They are doing uh, audits, ISM, ISPS, and MLC mainly. About flag inspections, if you are talking about annual flag inspection carried out by the flag inspector, which is not a class inspector or a class surveyor, we are working in a, in a, in a, let's say, in a very unique pilot program with uh, Carnival Cruise Line right now. We are implementing, we are implementing the remote flag inspection with them. We are in a process of, uh, you know, adjusting the, 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 the whole platform procedure, checklist, minimum requirements, which we're going to require. But uh, the remote inspection will not replace the physical inspection. And this will never happen. Because, uh, you know, as you see, we are removing the barriers, the safety barriers. And what are the safety barriers, the control, the monitoring? It's actually the inspection on site, the survey on site, the audit on site, the sense of the inspector once they board the vessel. I mean, I used to be seaman. I understand the sense to be on board over a year. When I was working at sea, we used to do 11 months. The MLC did not, I mean, the MLC was not even in the picture. We used to be at sea for over a year. And uh, at some point, you are not working anymore. You are just a robot working around the vessel. You don't even know if it's Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Sunday. You just wake up because you have to work. And this is at some point, you know, the new generation, as you said before, they are not used to that. So, you know, things become real, real uh, weird on board because accidents are, are, are increasing. And, and we have to do something yes. about it, you know? That's that's that. That is a point that I would like to, to, to point out, that not only accidents, but also uh, the worst, suicides on board. Correct. Or, or people, uh, seafarers who jump over during the I night. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. You are entirely correct. The numbers in terms of natural death, suicide, and people, and pe and people jumping over the side, close to the coastline, trying to get home, is, is happening. And we have seen this already. Actually, I have a meeting yesterday with Marine Casual, with our Marine Casualty Department talking about this. And I asked them, hey, we need to, you know, to get deep on the stats and we need to analyze this. And we have to report this to the IMO, you know, because we cannot keep these kind of things in our own pocket, you know. We have to go public and talk to everybody because there are some real things happening to the crew on board. And we have to sit together. We have to do something together. Yes, but and, I, and that's a fact of life. I'm, I'm so I truly agree with you on that. It's I a matter want, of life. I want to say once, once again that uh, shipping has not stopped working even a day. Although IMO has stopped discussing for many months, they have not yet done uh, meetings. So I believe that, uh, uh, yes, we are... Uh, yes, we are... Uh, I'm hearing it in my voice, I think, from somewhere. Maybe from Raphael or from Yanis. So it's now, okay, just uh, to say that uh, the, the CP, again, to say uh, has not stopped. Uh, we're here to find solutions. Of course, it's not easy. It will not come from a day, from one day to another. But before our uh, event, 
there was a Harvard Business School event and Dr. Rubini, uh, one of the most famous uh, economy uh, uh, financiers in the world, spoke and he said that we are in front of the deepest recession since World War II. So it's, let's, let's take everything at this and let's be lucky that we have the opportunity of discussing online and of, uh, of, uh, you know, of asking and replying. Before going to the other questions that we're still uh, uh, receiving, I would like to make a question to the ambassador because in the questions that we have received from the young people, we have also received some more personal questions and it would be also nice to say because uh, I have seen that uh, there are, first of all, they were very, uh, they liked very much, you know, your, your CV and what you have done. And uh, they would, uh, they were even asking, how is a day for an ambassador? Uh, I, you know, I know, I know that uh, it's, it's different, but you know, now that many, you know, the COVID has changed the daily life and uh, you are an ambassador of just, just such an important embassy, uh, they would like to know, uh, some young, young people ask, the, how is your day? Well, to be very honest, uh, mm -hmm. I never stop working, even yeah. in the COVID time, always we have a staff working in the office. So for me, really, it's spectacular and incredible to be an ambassador and represent Panama in Greece, in my in my, in my parents' uh, um, homeland. Okay. So trust me, my mission here is to promote Panama in every, in every section, in the ship registry, in the cultural tourism, educationally, and we're working very hard with our uh, staff to do that. But unfortunately, COVID has has um, um, cut a little bit our programs here, but we never stop. We never yes. stop. I can say that, of course, there are questions uh, uh, like, you know, you're a mother, uh, you're my wife, uh, you're also an ambassador. So it's uh, how you combine all these roles uh, before and after, because I am, I am very happy to say that we did this meeting during the lockdown, uh, you were so positive thinking of uh, not stopping working and that uh, nothing will stop uh, the embassy to uh, continue communicating. It was amazing that I saw in front of me a woman that was empowering us, saying, not yes, don't stop, still saying yes, we will all be together. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's this that, uh, what, what, gives you, what gives you the strength? How you manage to be so positive, even when crisis uh, knock uh, knock your door? And I say crisis, I mean many crises, because I'm sure that we have not had one crisis <laughs> in your life. Yeah, always. Uh, I love uh, life. That's the main thing. And um, having a family very close and supporting each other has teach me to uh, confront all the problems that are coming. I'm not the one, this kind of woman that cries, oh, what happened this to me? No, 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 no. I found a solution for all the problems. But for me also, it's very important that my staff, uh, Mr. Cigarrista, all the, the members of the new government in Panama are working very, very close with us. So when we have a problem, they help us to resolve it. So that makes me more powerful, more, more excited about my job. And the main thing is hopefully we can bring the Greek market to Panamanian with a Panamanian flag. Yes. That would be my dream because many, many years ago, all these tycoon, Greek tycoons have Panamanian flags on their vessels. Hopefully with our presence here, with our new government, we can uh, achieve that mission yes because uh, because shipping is international and panama has been always so close to to greece so the the advice is to the young people is to smile 
to think positively and that uh, every crisis can bring opportunities. Oh, a lot of opportunities. Actually, I will say many things. Never give up on your dreams in this industry, which faces a lot of challenges. That makes it very interesting. Be creative, passionate, and offer energy to your work. If you don't offer energy to your work, forget it. You are dead. You are not going to achieve any, any of your purposes in life. Also, my father used to say to me, Julie, work hard to support, to sustain yourself and be responsible to in order to people respect you. That was my main. I, 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 when I met you, many things that uh, uh, we discussed, we were agreeing because uh, I also believe and they say again and again, and I will say it once again, that nobody lost in his or her life if they were committed long term and they were ne- they were not forgetting from where they started and who helped them so it's always it's always important not to forget and not to take everything on uh, on gratitude rafael uh, mr sigurista is asking from the young people to switch on the cameras you know the new fashion is to have the cameras off and uh, I know that they have been in many online events and some of them are with pajamas or with the towel after the shower. You know, this is the great thing. I have done also Zoom calls, uh, half uh, being dressed officially and half uh, maybe with, uh, uh, you know, a gym or uh, uh, clothes. This is happening, I know, but uh, we try to convince them. They are a little bit shy. But believe me that they are all very beautiful. Maybe they don't want to decide from uh, the beauty. I want also just a few, a few words, just a little bit, not a presentation or something from Nigeria, from Yangtze Panama. Uh, just to say a few words what Yangtze Panama is doing because we're starting. We have started this open dialogue uh, with many young uh, organizations from all over the world. You can unmute Nijera. Just uh, down and uh, left. Great. Now we hear you. So you hear us? Yes, I can hear. Us. Great. So welcome also. It's great to be here. We don't want any special presentation. Just to tell us not a few things. Just uh, we know that Young Ship is existing in Panama. How many years it exists? and what the young people are doing in uh, Panama to empower the position. Uh, good, good evening to everyone. Um, Young Ship in Panama, we have two years since we opened here, and we are focused that help young people to achieve their goals, the positive always. Um, what else can I tell you about Young Ship in Panama? We're trying to young people... But they are having, having young people people participating in young yes, people. We are having young people to participate in young people um, conference activity is what we're working on because we want to give them the message that because you are young that don't mean that you have to limit to your to your dreams. You always need to um, work for your dreams, keep going on for everything. That is what we are doing here in Panama. Actually we are organizing a conference named Young Ship Iber America Conference. Panama will be the host. It will be at 15 and 16 October next month. Uh, we hope that you can participate with this event because you can hear young people advise what they think, what they expecting from Panama Maritime Authority. And this is, and of course, this forum is supporting uh, uh, this conference. We're also, uh, we will also upload it in our uh, uh, social media. Good luck with this conference. And uh, thank you very much for uh, being with us. I think also Eduardo is uh, uh, from there. So thank you also, Eduardo, for being with us. And Jaira, uh, who Vardas Constantinos. Uh, where is Constantinos? I don't know if he's open or what. He has done a question. You would like to... Hello. Make... Great. Hello, Constantino. Uh, you would like to present yourself and uh, say uh, yes, hello. where you are and make your question, please. Thank you. Yes, hello. Uh, in Fardas, I study naval architecture in uh, Newcastle University in the UK. 
and I basically the reason I'm studying is because I'm interested in engineering and I want to ask a question uh, more engineering uh, more engineering question uh, when the dialogue began uh, I'm really sorry for not remembering the name of the IMO member who is joining the conversation with us about the restrictions I, I want I want to ask the registry um, as far as they are concerned uh, in the new IMO restrictions what a shipping company must do in order to accomplish or achieve the regulations of the 2021 until 2025 I think it's a regulation I'm not sure Uh, what sorry? What restrictions and what reg um, and what regulation you are referring to? Remember that there are or, many things yeah. uh, running at the same time right now. Yeah, I'm really sorry. I forgot. I'm referring to greenhouse emissions. Uh, IMO regulations. For example, CO. You you mean you mean the the you mean the reduction of CO two and the greenhouses? Yes. Yes. This is what you are referring to. For example, to? scrubbers. Scrubbers, new fields. What do you think well, is, as a registry? Uh, okay. Remember that uh, reduction of CO2 and all this environment agenda start back in 2008. And uh, there is a, you know, there is a calendar that uh, the IMO has uh, published and has uh, requested from each of the flag administration to implement. We, as part of the, of, 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 as part of this uh, forum, we have implemented several things. As uh, during the presentation, we discussed a little bit about it. We have implemented the Annex Six of the Merpol, and we have uh, also uh, allowed our vessels to use uh, the the scrubbers, as you said. Few of them they are using the open type. Others are using the closed type. Others are, are using the hybrid. We have implemented the use of the low sulfur from, uh, you know, from uh, 1st of January and 1st of March. There is no allowance right now to vessels, you know, operate uh, using heavy fuel unless there are some special circumstances while the vessel is uh, commissioning and while they are trying the first time the scrubber. So they need to have the heavy fuel, you know, on board so they are able to prove the scrubber system. And uh, we are at, uh, in the middle of the data collection. Remember that uh, each of the vessel, they have to provide uh, information in, term, in terms of consumption and in, term of, in terms of uh, emissions, as uh, according to the IMO. And uh, we are in process to comply with the deadline established by the IMO, which uh, I think is by the end of the month, if I am not mistaken right now. So we as a flag state, we are in fully compliance with the, with the IMO requirements so far. But again, I'm, I'm not really sure if the agenda, you know, in, in, in the IMO is going to remain as it is. The COVID-19 certainly is going to, you know, put some pressures on the market. There are some delays on the implementation of uh, some countries mainly. And most probably they will require technical assistance or capacity building from the IMO. So I'm not really sure if we are going to comply with the, with the 2023, 2025, 2028, 2030, and 2050 calendar deadlines. So this has been uh, on a discussion. Actually, the MEPC 75 has been delayed. As you know, the IMO has delayed all the meetings. So you could take it from there. You know, if, if the meetings are not held, discussion is not taking place. So conclusions will not be made. Implementations will not be followed. So there are some delays right now. This is what I can tell you right now in terms of the of the implementations in this particular subject. Also, one more question. Um, 
you said about the scrubbers earlier. Uh, I know that, okay, they are two types of scrubbers, the closed type and the open type. So I don't remember what type exactly. It's not allowed to use in areas in, let's say, in the red zone as Hong Kong is, for example, uh, they are not allowed to use the scrubbers inside the port for the greenhouse emissions. Um, as, uh, do you have any other ideas as a registry or as a um, person who works in an area for a long period of time in more efficient ways to come to accomplish the regulations more efficiently? Well, don't forget few things. First of all, we have to collect information and to analyze the stats. So that's why the IMO implement the data collection. So every single flag administration has to provide to the IMO through the GISES platform, the, the whole numbers from their own fleet. So everything is gonna be put together and then we will analyze this during the, the, the panel session. Without having these stats properly analyzed, the, 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 there is no, how can I tell you this? If, if we are not sure of the numbers, we will not be able to implement in a proper way. So there is a process that is, in, that is being implemented and we are looking forward to get these numbers and see if what we have done with the lost sulfur is the proper decision or not. There are some, you know, environment opinions, environmental opinion from, uh, from those organizations that uh, they say that lost sulfur is producing even more black smoke. The black smoke, you know, to, to the public is sign of bad things. Not always is like that, but uh, if, if they see a black smoke, going out the funnel is like the vessel is polluting, right? So that's something that uh, we are uh, right now taking into consideration. Also, as you said, there are some vessels with, the, with using open scrubbers and there are some vessels using the closed type scrubbers. The problem is not the type, well, yeah, the type of the scrubber, the problem is that they don't allow, you know, the waste going through the water in other words, what you have been taken out from the air, you cannot put it on the water. Otherwise, you're not doing anything, right? So that's why you see some countries stopping the use of the open type. Because the open types are the one, you know, collecting all these uh, all you things, you know, substances. Because what they do, they wash the smoke internally in, in, in a... In a, in a in a container, they, they somehow wash the smoke and all these uh, polluting substances, they go through a system and they are pumping out to the water. So the pH, uh, you know, some acids and, and there are some, somehow a list of uh, chemicals that they are pumping out to the water. So they, th they say, no, we don't want this in the water because the, you know, this, the alkaline, I think is the word in English, is, is raising a little bit. So we are affecting the local waters. That's why they, they don't allow the use of the open type. But open seas, when you have current, when you have no, no, no close, like, like in the Panama Canal, we, we don't allow the use of open type scrubbers while transiting the canal, because this is a close area, right? But we use, we allow the use of open type in open sea port installation, because there is a water moving, you know? And there is always watching the, uh, over there. So th there are some special circumstances on each of the poor around the world. And that's why you see different countries, they have a different approach and they implement in a different way. But there are two main types, open and closed. And most of the types that countries don't allow is the closed type because they have to pump out the water. And that's the main reason, maybe. So we have two more questions from George, Mary, and Andreas. And after, if we are okay, we will start uh, closing the event. Uh, George, Mary, you want to start uh, with, uh, you want to open the microphone to make the question. Present also yourself. George, Mary, ah, 
you have internet, you're okay. Just unmute because you are muted. No, left and uh, somewhere you have to have the mute. Maybe Andreas to unmute uh, to make your question and then George Mario will also do it. Yes, Andrea, we hear you. Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, excellent. Uh, good evening, gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my question is I have already uh, write uh, down. Uh, uh, you have already mentioned uh, earlier the usage of technical innovations in your organizations. Are you familiar with blockchain technology? Uh, number A question regarding the secure paperless procedure, apart from what you have already mentioned, because it's a, a state of the art nowadays, and uh, B, track and trace vessel cargo function to your uh, vessels uh, under Panama flag. Thank you. Right. There are three questions there, I think. Uh, this is, this is the, the first. This is the first with uh, two uh, sub questions, A and B, and, and then another question next. <laughs> right. I will try to, to provide you with a proper answer. Uh, as you said, there are some new regulations in terms of uh, fleet compliance. What we are trying to do is to monitor what is the fleet doing. If you are talking about, uh, you said something about the fleet, right? So what, what we try to do, we, we don't want to sanction any vessel. However, internationally speaking, sometimes uh, there are some pressure from the uh, United Nations, for instance. I, I'm not sure if you are talking about this, or if you are relating to this, but uh, if, if you are talking about uh, the about that particular things, there is a list of countries where the vessels should not go and trade. If, if you go over there, certainly the vessel is gonna get some, somehow in problems. We monitor this. We don't allow the vessels to switch off the LRIT or to switch off the AIS, which is something which is uh, happening nowadays. And we try to push the ship owners. If something goes wrong with, the, with those equipments, please let us know. So we know that uh, you are not switching off or tampering the equipment. This is something that uh, we have, uh, you know, tried to do in order to help the ship owners not to get sanctioned. About uh, electronic documents, I'm not, I'm not really sure if this is what you are asking, but uh, are you talking about the security of the document, electronically speaking? Very right, we have the- Fast and secure, fast and secure. Right, we have the QR, as I said during my presentation, if you scan the QR, you will have the information from our database directly. It means that the document cannot be modified, cannot be falsified, cannot be fake. Even though uh, uh, th there is no like, like it used to be, you know, like a formal form with stamp and signature, no. You, could, you, you, you will have like electronic signature and you will be able to see always the document in a in a origin in in a real form, it means that the document which you scan in a real time is always original. So the information goes straight from our database. There is no way right now, you know, as far as we are able to identify that somebody else could uh, fake or modify the information which you see on that document. Not every vessel has the electronic registration right now. We are in a process to change slowly all of them in our entire fleet. The vessel which are certified, I think from, the, from March 2020, are the one having the electronic registration on board with the proper QR properly working as a safety, you know, as a safety measure. Okay, sir, you have, uh, you have covered me at 90% uh, regarding blockchain to the first part with the track and trace. Right. Never mind, but you covered me. Uh, what is your consideration about this topic? Number two, if you don't mind, due to the uh, pressure of time, uh, I, my current uh, duties has to do with the uh, NATO uh, sea transports. Uh, so I'm mm -hmm. asking the following. Uh, what is your opinion about providing a Panama vessel, an asset, in a cargo request 
from a NATO member for a strategic sea lift, we mean a sea transport, using a war risk insurance premium in a possible high risk area. Wow. Now we are talking about insurance and coverage. That's pretty good here. This is getting intense. Uh, listen, uh, we, to be very honest with you, we don't interfere in the commercial aspects of the business. We try to provide a platform as easy as possible for cheap owners, whatever, you know, whatever considerations you as a, as a, as a trader consider between part A and part B, we don't interfere with that. I have seen that lately on international news, they are talking about STS approval from flag administrations and things like that. We are not on that direction right now. There are so much information to discuss about it. And certainly sooner or later, there are gonna be some controls on that. But right now, Panama is not engaged on any discussions on implementing such a regulation. However, we don't want our vessels be involved on, uh, you know, in, in, in situations where we can be banned or where we can have our flag involved on, uh, you know, in, on international scandals. As you see, there are some uh, international uh, medias which are looking after those vessels which are sanctioned, for instance, by OFAC or by the United Nations. So I'm pretty sure you guys, uh, as operators or managers, you, know, you, you don't want your name on that particular list. You know, this, even though it's not applicable to your country, is creating some issues internationally speaking. You know, you cannot go open to the market if one of your vessels is listed in OFAC. Of course, this is gonna create problems uh, to everybody. So that's why we are looking into the situation in a very in a very sensitive way. Let's put it on this way. But uh, as I said, we don't have anything on black and white right now. We are not engaged on any conversations such uh, requiring approval for STS in our fleet. But uh, certainly, sooner or later, don't be surprised, the international market is pushing on that direction, so there will be something. I'm not sure when, but uh, you know, trading, especially oil, LPG, LNG, chemicals, you know, are, uh, are very sensitive matters nowadays. nowadays sorry. Thank you very much, sir. You have covered me a lot. Thank you very much. George Thank Mario. you. I, I, I'm glad. I'm glad I did it. <laughs> George Maria. Hello, everyone. Hello, guest forum. Hello, Panama. Thank you very much for this great presentation, all of you, and fruitful conversation tonight. And well, my question is simple. How does the Panama Sea Registry manage the administrative burden in Greece and this controversial issue of bureaucracy in our country on a daily basis? I, I, I could elaborate, but I will give the stage to our people over there. You, you, you are the one leading with the local market. Could you elaborate on this one? Yes, of course, Rafael. Uh, Jose? Okay, technically speaking, as a, a representative of the Tenga office, I can say that we don't find any, let's say, burden or obstruction or difficulties. Actually, we are collaborating with the local port authorities, for state control, uh, different authorities, let's say, in the Greek uh, country and Greece, and actually, the cooperation and we have noticed the, the improvement the last years uh, regarding the the reports uh, even in, via email and it's sometimes even in English that is help us in the reporting out to our head office the communication that they, they are already different for authorities have our direct line and even our mobile regarding technical speaking coordinating with poor authorities we have no no let's say no obstacle, let's say. We have opened a lot of the channel of communication, have improved a lot. Maybe the, what you're referring is to when you are using the Greek administration as a flag. I don't know, I don't have the experience on that, but as a Panama flag tank office here, the cooperation with local authority is, let's say, quite good. Expedite, let's say. Thank you, Jorge. 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 Thank you, Jorge.
in general, our embassy and consulate really works very well and close with the Greek government in each section, politically, economically, maritime. And now we are working the commercial industrial sector too. Exactly, and the, and the cooperation is very good. I, I would not like, first of all, they're sending me messages also some young people and in the chat because they have the option to send it privately that uh, when we will have the link for this, we want to share it with other young people that they, they did not know that today this will happen. Uh, I want to say, uh, because we are already almost two hours and I don't want to keep you longer, uh, first of all, it is a great honor that uh, uh, the, young, uh, the young people of the young shipping executives and students and young, young people had the opportunity to speak directly with the general director of uh, Merchant Marine of the Panama Maritime Authority. I mean, Mr. Segurista, I think that they have bombarded you with questions. I don't know how much you were waiting that the young people, they would go so <laughs> deep into the questions. But really, uh, we thank you very, very much on behalf of all of them. And this is why it's so <laughs> This is sometimes when something is unmuted and the other is speaking. Uh, so we would like to thank you very, very much for being with us. A great honor. Of course, I will thank the embassy and the ambassador. But, you know, sometimes, and this, the magic of COVID is that they can bring so many uh, important people in our screen and we can communicate like they are next to us. So yes. thank you for your time because we know that it's very valuable, your time, and you have many important issues to take care of. But, uh, and thank you for, for uh, understanding that uh, we must create the next shipping generation and we need the help from all of you for a healthy and valuable uh, dialogue. I don't know if you want to say something before going to the, uh, to the embassy, but it, it, it is a great honor for all of us. And uh, because we bombarded you, I just wanted to say a big thank you. That's, uh, that, that, I mean, that's an honor to be very honest uh, with you guys. And uh, from my side, you could always assure that uh, if you have any question or if you need any assistance from us, please just let us know. We are more than open to, to be part of the discussion. Same time, they learn from us, we learn from them. And uh, I consider myself a John executive. <laughs> so at the end, at the end of the day, you know, I'm part of the young generation as well, you know. Yes, so I'm, I'm, I'm part of it. And thank you very much for, for inviting me as well. Thank you. In shipping, we are all young because in, in shipping, you never know real shipping. We are always Correct. young in shipping. So always. this is why, and uh, you know, it's, it's, very, it's very important also to empower the young people to make the questions they feel, even if they don't know. I mean, I would like to say congratulations to Constantinos from Newcastle, that although he was not sure of what he was asking, sure yes. 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 Correct. It, it, it's important to, to feel confident of, uh, of uh, themselves. And to try, you know, even when they're not sure anymore. So thank you very, very much. And of course, thank you. at this point, I would like to thank from the bottom of Yes Heart, all the embassy and the consulate for all the organization uh, for being so, uh, you know, so well, not well prepared. I mean, to make such a great uh, uh, program, even if it was for an online dialogue with the young people. And uh, it's, it's, it's amazing that the first dialogue with uh, an embassy uh, had to do with all the embassy and uh, to present the whole spectrum of the services of Panama uh, as a country. So, Your Excellency, what can I say? The thank you is just a small one to say thank you because it's, it's, it's very important what we did today and uh, it's, it's a great start, I think. Actually, we have
I have to congratulate you and all of you, these young, beautiful people, that are really strong thinker. And I can see that you are strong workers too. I like that too. So I really would like to invite you all to our consulate here in Pireos. And um, feel free, this is your home too. And if you need any, any information, any services, any help, we are all here to help you uh, in this matter. You know, last year, sorry to interrupt you, we had an open day in Actimiaoui. I mean, uh, uh, I think uh, five uh, teams of young people have started from one side and, uh, to Actimiaoui, and they have been in several uh, companies. I mean, they were going up, 15. having a quick chat, and then going down to another one. So, and at the end, we all met in Olp to the... Uh, uh, Pyreus Terminal uh, 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 area, and uh, we uh, discussed with them about their experience of that day. So be sure that when the next open day of uh, uh, Actinia only happens after this COVID uh, mess, we will for sure uh, have Panama in the stops, and uh, yeah. we will stop in the, in the embassy to come up to bring a little bit noise. And uh, uh, some, young, some young, beautiful faces from all the spectrum. Uh, thank you also all the team, Nikki, Anna, Racina, uh, Lena, Sofia. Thank you very, very much for the honor. And of course, uh, uh, Mr. Miguel uh, from uh, Panama also. Uh, young C Panama, all the young people that they were with us uh, these two hours. And, uh, uh, let's say uh, that we will meet. Uh, we will meet again, in meet or meet. We will see how we will make it happen. But for sure, we will stay in contact. So happy, uh, happy World Maritime Day, and uh, let's all the World Maritime to be like this, full of young smiles, full of uh, sipping info, and full of will for synergies between Panama and this, which is very beautiful, very That's important. That's why we like this forum, it's all yes. It's all <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah. can we find that all of these young people, one day they will be maybe in an operational team to decide of what flag to choose. So let's hope that they will be <laughs> 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 okay, okay. Thank you very, very much for everything. <laughs> Ευχαριστούμε πάρα 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 πολύ και χρόνια πολλά για την ημέρα της εναυτιλίας. Χαρήκαμε Έτσι. πάρα πολύ. Και Είμαστε στη διάθεσή σας πάντα, παιδιά. Σας έχουμε όλα τα καλά, ο Θεός μαζί σας. Και θέλω να σας δω πάντα καλά με υγεία και ψηλά. Εκεί που θέλει η καρδιά σας να φτάσετε. Ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ. Ευχαριστώ, 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 Ευχαριστούμε πολύ. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ και εμείς.